G'day scrappers, I just got back from dropping off a couple of tubs of circuit boards and I got some more here to ready to go some low grade and uh, some more motherboards and yeah uh, just starting to trying to clear off a little bit of uh, excess stuff uh, got to get my tubs back I dropped off two board uh, two tubs and uh, they didn't have any empties so I got to uh, I'm just loading up so I go back tomorrow and um, uh, get a couple of or get four empties but today what I'm doing is we're going to be cutting cords today processing a lot of stuff here um, the cords have sort of gotten over over my normal limits <laughs> and uh, so I've got two full bins here that need to be processed as soon as possible because I, I need at least two empty bins preferably four empty bins um, so this is my little station here that I'm, I'm preparing so this is my first uh, bin full of cords uh, it's probably going to take me most of the day to uh, just get through this bin uh, a lot of cord cutting I've got my uh, three normal tubs here that's for plugs uh, rubbish plugs and stuff and that's for wire and that's for um, goal recovery plugs so yeah there's three tubs here that I, I really got to get through this week and uh, I've got another tub full here um, that would be nice to go as well and then under the clothesline here I've got uh, a little mountain of uh, cable that needs to be uh, sorted and cut and processed uh, this was from two tubs that I had to empty so I could fill up the uh, tubs again from stuff that comes out of the van uh, so what well, three four so at least six tubs worth that I need to uh, process ideally in the week but because um, it's a lot of work with the the side cutters um, it really does uh, do wear and tear on on the hands so after a, a couple of days of just cutting cords it really uh, you really notice it and the fingers start getting stuck <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is what I'm not going to do is these plugs with the uh, brass prongs I'm just going to put them aside and process them another time because they're one of the things that really um, do wear and tear on the on the hands so um, I'll avoid doing that although I prefer to cut them as I go um, I, I always sort of recommend don't stock up hundreds of these plugs to do because you end up doing a real big job you know it's another couple of days worth of work um, for quite low value so but I've got no choice today so I'm going to just cut these plugs off and put them in a separate tub um, but wherever I look I've got buckets and tubs of cords that need to be processed they're just coming from everywhere at the moment um, in them boxes as well yeah so it's uh, it's a bit crazy at the moment uh, yeah <laughs> a lot of things another box just came in uh, yesterday afternoon I've done a little pickup so all right that's all I'm going to be doing today so I thought uh, seeing that I'm going to be bored out of my brain doing this I thought I might as well bore everyone else and uh, we'll go through some cord cutting and uh, mostly just have a bit of a chat about scrap life and uh, whatever else I can think of at the time but yeah I've got no time for processing PCs and stuff and uh, got a whole bunch of Cisco stuff down there and uh, yeah it's all it's all going good but uh, um, yeah before it gets uh, too crazy this is just a regular garbage bin so I, I can't use that but before it gets uh, over my head I've got to at least get on top of these cords all right let's get to it well now's as good a time as any to uh, make a start on all this so uh yeah usb plugs gold recovery data cable just cut i have to cut off these plugs but i don't, I don't go for these as gold recovery um we've already tried there's been a couple guys do a sample of these very little gold recovery for the amount of work that to get into this plastic 
it's just not worth it it's just too much work for the uh for the very little gold that we get from these um so yeah it's a shame you know like this one's only got two pins in there but yeah I've tried to uh get these pins out um smashing them up try it's just so hard work and for what we get out of it just uh not worth it and so this uh cat 5 cat 6 cable this goes as a data cable so uh i don't have a bin for it here so i'm just going to throw it on the ground actually My little rubbish tub underneath me so I can cut into the tub <laughs> uh, yeah so it's a uh, interesting times at the moment with uh, um, you know all the stuff that's going on with the virus and all that um, a lot of uh, you guys aren't able to uh, get out and do much scrapping because of the restrictions the lockdowns and all that kind of thing uh, here we're not 100% locked down although um, from today we're at stage three uh, whatever that means basically we can still go out for uh, essential things like shopping um, and doctors and stuff like that uh, but uh, that's kind of about it so but we can go if we're working and so uh, you know the confusing thing is like for me street scrapping is is a bit of a hobby but it's also it's my job it's my uh, source of income um, as little as it usually is sometimes uh, yeah it's uh, it's my one of my sources of income and um and so technically it's it's an essential job for me to go out there and street scrap so uh i'm not really sure on the technicality um but yeah we'll see what happens yeah with these plugs here um probably i find one of the best things normally i'm using side cutters because i can't be bothered looking for a pair of shears but garden shears just your cheap ones like if you go to your hardware store you buy your two dollar garden shears um they're usually good enough to uh, cut off these main plugs and uh, the beauty of them is you can cut right up to as much as you want up to the plug because technically you still it's plugs removed right no plug but um as you can see we've got a nice chunky bit of plastic on the end here which adds to the weight of the the wire uh, it's still got copper running through it but yeah so we've cut the plugs but we've cutting cutting a lot more and with the garden shears you can really you know and it really slices on the only thing you want to worry about is uh make sure your fingers are out the way because uh no mercy <laughs> these are technically data cable but uh, i just throw these into regular insulated wire usually get away with it yeah so, yeah so i mean we're not in an absolute complete lockdown so I'm assuming I can still go street scrapping plugs like this because it's got two it's only a little cord and it's got two you know reasonably heavy these two probably weigh more than the wire so I just throw these straight into low grade with the plugs on anything that you leave the plugs on will be low grade so um, you actually get more money than cutting the, those plugs off because there's just not enough weight so yeah, through the uh, 
on the weekend I'm going to go back out and um, do another day of street scrapping. Hopefully it's a little bit better than the last one. Uh, got totally rained out and it was just too stormy um, for me to to stay out there. And always in the back of my mind, I know that how much work I've got back here. So I'm thinking, geez, you know, going around um, to pick up a little bit of street scrap whilst I enjoy it. Sometimes it's just uh, just adding more stuff to uh, what I already got to catch up on. So yeah. Normally I prefer to do this on a workbench so everything drops onto the bench but um, I set this little setup here and I, I'm just sitting down and just uh, have a bit of a break. This is, uh, I won't worry about these ones, but this goes as data cable as well as the like the Cat 5, Cat 6. And uh, with the USB plugs, I always try and get a little bit more of the rubber off. Make these as uh, short as possible. Um, because I'm stockpiling them, you know. Less weight to carry around and uh, more weight added to the wire. But yeah, it's going to take me ages. Uh, this, obviously, it's an antenna wire. So... Um, it's very, it's very low grade. It's only got one fine uh, core running through the center. It's all plastic and stuff. And so I don't bother taking the plugs off and this just goes as low grade wire along with anything else with plugs. But yeah. So what I've got two, four, uh, at least six uh, bins that I need to process so uh, that's going to take me ages but I really need to get onto it because I'm more is probably going to come through you know so I'll just cut these off these are gold plated gold plated jacks quite low gold recovery but I still uh, take all these things um, no, lost it. But yeah, they're so low there. I don't really fuss over them. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a it's a very hands-on job. This, you know, it's just uh, I really shouldn't have let things get so um, built up. Although it doesn't take long because at the moment I'm getting cable from a few different sources. Um, and so I am getting some large quantities and it's just impossible to, to do it all in one day because I've got other stuff to process. So um, But I'll... Uh, I'll be interested to see what the scrap prices are at the moment, uh, whether they've dropped much. I'll have some, at least some cable. I know that like I've taken in scrap steel and the price hasn't really, hasn't changed at all actually. So some people are saying like in America, the price has dropped down, but it hasn't dropped down here. But I'm thinking maybe also because of our dollar is uh, quite low value. So maybe that sort of makes up for it um, but at least things like petrol has uh, dropped quite a bit in price um, not so much diesel which my van uses but still uh, uh, it's a little bit cheaper so it just makes it cheaper to run around and do street scrapping and do uh, e-waste pickups and stuff um, I, I hate these little headphones. I do get a lot of them. But 
well you can't complain it's all it all adds up so I don't normally try and drag out wire out of the out of the tub like trying to get the entire piece I just cut my way through the tub so I'll just cut how much comes out and that kind of releases uh, the the wire eventually all the tangles because it does get tangled up a lot these nice so uh, got a lot of this sort of stuff and it's just really nice chunky wire cut off the plugs got some nice pieces here it's good wire good value little USB so I, I guess for uh, a lot of other guys that are um, in lockdown well it's a great opportunity to do all your little um, things to catch up on stuff that you might have lying around um, especially if you're stockpiling gold recovery stuff you know it's you know rather than just sitting around and watching TV you know you might want to catch up with um, you know your gold pins and stuff like that I'd love to be able to um, get through all this all the gold recovery um, you know plugs and stuff this is a, a second working barrel I've got a barrel that's twice as big as that it's full um, so they all need to be uh, at least sorted into their categories and I, but I just don't have time um, so for, for some of you guys that are in lockdown and can't get out there to pick up much scrap or you're not getting calls from businesses and so on um, yeah now's a really good time to reset your workshop uh, you know um, even clean up things like uh, clean up your buckets and uh, whatever uh, just really um catch up on stuff so uh later on you're um you're ready to go when everyone's getting back back into things and you know you're one step ahead uh that's what i'd be doing i'd be re setting my tools cleaning up some tools giving them a bit of a wd-40 um but i you know unfortunately i don't have that kind of luck that kind of chance well it's not luck i suppose it's if i couldn't uh, go out and do any kind of pickups uh, that would be pretty bad luck so with these um vga plugs i keep these obviously for gold recovery pins uh, because i'm stockpiling i like to reduce the weight so i remove these but if you're selling these plugs then don't bother taking out these pins but for me I'm just uh, it reduces a lot of the weight so that's ready to go for stockpiling and these ones yeah you know you got to take out this bead if you're going to sell the wire so sometimes they come out complete other times not uh, yeah but uh, so so no matter what situation your your lockdowns are and all that you know um from home you can do what you want and so it's yeah it's just a really good chance to do all that and uh maybe even network with people um whatever you know but uh yeah i think it's a a, a good opportunity for for guys that are locked down rather than just sort of saying oh you know we're locked down can't do nothing well there's still plenty to do in the workshop reset all your buckets relabel things uh, oh gosh you know me I'd just like to be resorting all my stockpile gold recovery stuff <laughs> that would be uh, really good but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that for a while um, although because a lot of businesses are slowing down and have closed up I guess I'm not going to get many 
business calls uh, to pick up e-waste, especially in the in the next few weeks anyway. So it's probably going to give me a good chance to really catch up on stuff and uh, get get back to where I want to be. Um, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> this is going to be me for the next at least three or four days. Uh, I'm not going to uh, slow down on this this because as you can see, I've already spent some time here, haven't really processed a heap. Um, so yeah, and. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Oh, yeah. Um, just a little plug for another scrapper on YouTube. Um, he's actually a long-term subscriber of mine. And he's uh, started up his YouTube channel uh, uh, a few months ago. And I just wanted to uh, give him a little plug to... Uh, uh, invite some of uh, my subscribers to uh, subscribe to him and check out some of his videos. He does similar things to me, you know, does uh, street scrapping, um, scraps out stuff um, in the workshop. So, um, yeah, very similar things. And uh, he's uh, quite a good guy. And, yeah, I just want to do... Uh, he's only got, like... Um, a couple hundred subscribers so I wanted to um, give him a plug and see if we can get him to uh, at least a thousand subscribers just to kick off his channel um, so if you've uh, got nothing to do and uh, you want to watch a bit more scrapping stuff and help out uh, another scrapper to get his channel up and running um, Go to uh, log on to his um, channel. It's Shark Scrapper. So shark as in the swimming shark scrapper. I'll try and put the uh, the name of his uh, channel down to, down below of this part of the video. I'm not very good at that sort of stuff when it comes to editing, but maybe you'll see his uh, YouTube channel down the bottom here. Shark Scrapper. Um, yeah. Like I said, he's he's been a subscriber of mine for a long time. He's a really nice guy, and um, you know I'd just like to uh, just help him out. He hasn't asked me for it or anything like that, and um, you know which is pretty cool too because I, I do get a lot of YouTubers, you know, asking me to uh, um, you know subscribe to their channel or check them out and all that and um, promote their channels and um, you know I mean can only do so much but um but this guy hasn't asked and so i hope it's okay with him <laughs> um but yeah so check him out and uh let's see if we can get him to 1000 subscribers just to give his uh, channel a bit of a start and um yeah and you guys are always great always give good advice and stuff and uh you know and i'm sure he, he he's still got things that he wants to learn himself so probably always welcome to get a bit of a commentary on his videos and uh, yeah just uh, give him a start off if you can that'll be uh, much appreciated shark scrapper check him out he's uh, he's an American scrapper he's in Florida um, so uh, yeah um, good luck to you mate I hope your channel goes kicks off real real well um i'm a subscriber i try and watch uh as many videos as i can of people but usually i just don't have time to get sorry get around to um all the uh people that i subscribe to um but yeah i try and log on and watch uh people's videos for as long as i can as much as i can so uh yeah you know and uh i know full well how um you know it, how long it takes to uh get a, a youtube channel off the ground and started like you really need a, a, at least a thousand subscribers just to 
you know, make a start and get some sort of uh, flow going with uh, views and stuff like that. And um, um, YouTube also lets you monetize your channel. And, you know, but don't, you know, don't think that with a thousand subscribers, a YouTuber makes much at all. You know, you might make a few bucks a, a week or a month, um, but it's just, a, it's a start to, uh, to get people um, motivated to make more videos and a small community, the uh, Scrapper YouTube uh, community. So, you know, we're trying to help each other out and, um, you know, the more uh, channels out there going, promotes scrapping, promotes uh, recycling, um, and all that kind of thing. And uh, it also, you know, a lot of people get educated from all this, you know, and uh, and that's what we want. And we want people to uh, know that uh, if you did want to make a little bit extra money, uh, you know, all's not lost. You can always go out and pick up a bit of scrap and. Um, and you can do okay. So uh, that's what it's all about. It's all, all about passing on information and teaching other people in the world um, how to make money. Sure, it's, you know, a lot of countries, it's, it's, it's really hard to, um, to get scrap. Some places like uh, in the UK, um, street scrapping, it's very competitive. You know, uh, something's left on the street, you know, a bunch of stuff it's picked up within within half an hour it's all gone and they don't just uh pick up what they want like me i can be very selective in what i take um you know in some places of the world uh they take everything and uh sort it out later on and throw out what they don't want uh but they don't leave anything for anyone else and uh that's what i like to do i see stuff that yeah sure i could probably make a little bit of uh, money on by selling it on ebay but it's not really my go so i'd rather leave it for uh, another scrapper that that does that kind of thing that you know might sell at uh, uh car boot sales or a market or uh something like that um and so i only take what i really want not you know i'm not just picking up just for the sake of um trying to make money on everything uh and well you you guys know what i like you know i like my pcs that's uh, the main thing um pretty much any kind of uh um electronics you know stereo systems uh, all that kind of thing uh, you know i like all that kind of stuff um and i leave you know the furniture and uh, uh other things push bikes and all that to people that uh know more about them and can be bothered um, going for it. We're losing a few cords here. Probably talking too much. And but yeah, so you know, as you can see from the last, you know, ten minutes of me doing all this, um, it's tedious. It's it's you know a slow thing, but it's not like not hard work and you know it's it can be quite enjoyable and you know uh, just really good downtime stuff uh, so you know people that are not relying on um, picking up scrap and e-waste um, purely for an income you know if, if you you know just want something interesting to do you know, um, I find e-waste very interesting and um, and also very rewarding in, you know, because uh, one thing I can tell you that, you know, it's really funny, but uh, when I used to work for someone else, you know, for a living, um, I used to live paycheck to paycheck. And um, maybe because of the thought that, of the knowledge that, um, yeah, you know, I can spend my money today because next week I'm going to get paid again, you know, and so it sort of puts you in that comfortable situation where you think, oh, well, I get paid again next week, doesn't matter if I spend it all, you know, I can uh, make do for a week um, until I get paid again. 
um, where it's a lot different when you're relying on, you know, scrapping for an income, because uh, you probably spend less money on on junk because you know where you know your your money's coming from, and you know that uh, you know to just go out and blow a couple hundred bucks. You know how much work you kind of kind of got to do, what, how much scrap you got to pick up to get that hundred couple hundred bucks back. You know, um, so I don't know what it is and how it works, but um, and I remember I was told this. Um, someone mentioned it uh, a few years ago that um, scrappers, as poor as they look, like picking up scrap on the street and that, they they, they never seem to run out of money. Um, I can't remember a, a time when I've haven't had. Um, being able to buy whatever I want to buy, um, you know, always got money in my pocket, never got an empty wallet. Um, so yeah, it is true, you know, uh, that's really strange, but maybe because it's just because we're constantly going to the scrapyard and cashing in stuff like, you know, uh, every week I'm going in and sending in scrap metal, you know, so there's always a payment there, you know, whether it's uh, 60, 70 bucks, you know, so, you know, there's always money for fuel um, and stuff. Um, and then, you know, selling, uh, you know, the the more valuable stuff, always sending out a batch of uh, circuit boards and, you know, um, you know, might be a thousand or two, you know, uh, then getting, getting stuff that I can resell like uh, laptops and good computers. Uh, you know, you, you know, you might make a few hundred bucks or more just on a little batch of uh, laptops. Um, um, yeah, it just, I don't know. I can't explain it really, but uh, it's, that's just how it works. And, um, you know, obviously it doesn't happen straight away. Like if you just go out and um, pick up a bit of scrap off the street and or maybe do a, a dumpster dive here and there, you know, uh, but um, after a while, when you've uh, built up some, some people that uh, will uh, call you up when they've got scrap and, and that sort of stuff and after a year or so um, it starts it starts really uh, multiplying you know you get new people calling you and then um, old people you know old clients from last year start you know call you up again to come and pick up a few things so it starts really you know doubling up every year and uh yeah so so i'm just sort of giving a bit of a pep talk to uh you know would be new uh new scrappers potential scrappers that are looking to you know make a bit extra bucks or just uh interested you know if if you're interested in uh repairing electronics especially uh computer stuff and that you know you can do pretty good you know you you pick up a, a a few old PCs and restore them and um, you can do pretty good you know um, there are people that do real well out of that kind of business um, for me if the computer is good enough to resell I've got buyers to buy them uh, I don't have to uh, uh, you know worry about restoring them or all that kind of thing um, I can just pass them on and and just get half the money you know of what it's worth you know rather than uh, spending all that time listing on eBay. I just don't have time, but you know, there's nothing wrong with it. People that have got time to, to list and package and post and all that. Um, yeah, by all means, um, put a bit more time into the, the stuff that you get, make the most of everything that you get in. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly well worth it. So, you know, and, uh, for, for your gold recovery guys well you know sure uh, a lot of um you know a lot of e-waste these days is a lot lower in gold recovery and precious metal recovery overall so you know it it, it takes a lot longer to uh, build up an, enough uh items to uh to, you know to make it worthwhile going for gold recovery but it's still there and uh, as you're picking up your your modern stuff you know, you, you get your oddball um, vintage PCs and stuff that if they're uh, if they're too far gone and not worth restoring and selling just as vintage PCs, then 
um, yeah, you've got good goal recovery there. So there's still plenty of opportunity. I mean, the, the big recyclers out there, they're still doing it because, you know, they're not going to, trying to uh, resell st stuff, most of them. They're going for the precious metal recovery like all of us. So there's still, um, you know, good precious metals, uh, you know, enough in e-waste today to still make it worthwhile. And uh, yeah, so for gold recovery people, don't be discouraged. Just stockpile and keep building it up, you know. Might take a little bit longer, but it's going to, um, it's going to get there in the end. Um, I can't wait to uh, start going through my, you know, stockpile of gold recovery stuff and, you know, really one day sitting down and, and really working out what I've got. And, um, you know, by then I'll be able to, you know, I can calculate roughly, you know, how much precious metals I can get out of it and, you know, the value of it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But for now, while I'm still in the midst of... Um, picking up e-waste commercially and street scrapping and all that uh, I'll just keep stockpiling because it's not going anywhere um, so yeah so this is probably the the most I've I've talked <laughs> in one go you're probably thinking geez that guy can talk well, not really. I, I'm not a big talker. I'm, um, you know, I'm more of a pretty, I like to be pretty quiet, but, you know, uh, if I'm talking too much, you could always turn the volume down. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's just the point of this, this video anyway, is to um, just sort of catch up and, and just talk a bit of scrap with my scrapper buddies all over the world <laughs> yeah it's just amazing that how um how many people uh you know how many you know different people from all over the world sort of watch my channel and channels like this it's just incredible um it's very surprising uh you know and uh but i guess the language of scrap is universal <laughs> and yeah it's all good so well this this is all from uh cut from power supplies from pcs sometimes i do too many at one time it's just not enough time to cut these plugs off Uh, it gets done so like I said I could have left all these plugs on save the time and just thrown it into low grade wire but we're trying to get you know much more now we can sell this as mid grade insulated wire so um, instead of like a dollar dollar twenty a kilo we're now getting two dollars forty a kilo um, and the plugs and all that that's all going to be stuffed into pcs and stuff and it's just going to go as um scrap metal you know there's still uh, like brass and um and copper running through it with the wire and all that so it's still value for the uh, scrapyard once it gets processed uh, they might be able to get get those uh base metals out if not it'll just go as they'll just you know mix it into their steel not really sure what happens with it, but still. But these ones have got the uh, gold pins inside, so we keep them for gold recovery. And these ones with the uh, big round circles, they don't have gold. So we just get rid of them. Same as these, obviously just uh, brass or something inside whatever they are yeah well 
we've knocked off the top anyway and we're starting to work our way into it now so yeah it's uh it's all looking good i mean it just takes time that's all it is and um but as you can see it's uh, these are a bit, bit grubby it's um it's a lot of hand work so it's uh it you know it does wear and tear, give wear and tear onto your hands you know and like this part here it's uh, really dry and you know cracks up and this this part this part of the finger here um using uh, the side cutters you know but uh that's not the problem really um it's it's more it's the this action of cutting that you do it for you know say three or four days straight and um one day you wake up and you just can't can't move your hand you know and it's no good if you you've got to keep working and stuff um you know it can you know give you a, a bit of short-term injury uh just uh, with the repetitive of the work so i do try and um at least have a, a day break after every couple of days of doing it just to give me hands and just the bones and the muscles to um, just just recover a little bit otherwise yeah you do get the repetitive or RSI or whatever it is and uh, it's not very pleasant especially if you've got you know you've got to keep going so the ideal thing which what I'd prefer to be doing is do uh, one hour of cutting cords, then an hour of scrapping out PCs or an hour of uh, something else, then moving around the workshop, then coming back, do it, doing another hour of this, and then, um, you know, then uh, maybe sweeping up or cleaning up uh, and so on. And just just do it like that that way um it's not as repetitive in both ways uh it doesn't drive you crazy after a while and at the same time you're uh, you're le less risk of injuring yourself anyway So my first bin that I empty out is just, that's just going towards the uh, low grade wire. I haven't got a low grade bin at the moment. So that's the first thing that, the first bin that's going to go to work. And then from there, we'll just play by ear. But I, I always, because I'm buying e-waste, I need bins empty. So when people bring me in boards and stuff, I've got somewhere to put them temporarily and you know until i can sort them out and stuff and so bins are really handy for that and also when i'm bringing in e-waste from uh, businesses and so on and street scrapping even you know i've got somewhere to empty the van into to uh keep it out of the rain or whatever depending on what it is uh, so it's um i just don't have enough room to put in any more wheelie bins how many i've got i've got five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah i've got about 15 wheelie bins in operation and yeah i'd probably like another four or five but i just don't have the room to uh to keep them so that's that's the issue if i had more space i'd have more bins <laughs> And that's starting to fill up. Not bad. It all goes quickly. So um, my uh, insulated mid-grade wire bin is almost full as well. So looks like 
before this video is done, I'll probably um, have a trip to the scrapyard. We'll just see how we go. If not, I might just do a separate video on the scrapyard and scrapyard prices and see where we're at at this this strange time for the whole world it's really crazy and yeah uh, just going by what i'm hearing on on the news and stuff you know like in america they're you know america's starting to get hit pretty hard with it and uh you know, I hope they they get on top of it soon because, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing pretty big numbers. Well, these are really nice gold pins. Look at that. They're about as good as it gets. It's a Cisco plug. So that's, um, it doesn't really surprise me that these pins are, are so awesome. Just going to get this one. Just dead weight look at that wow they are beautiful gold pins I'll put that to be processed one day yeah yeah so Hopefully, um, everyone sort of, uh, hopefully we get rid of this virus really soon and we can all go back to normal life and, um, and just uh, make it safe for everyone, especially, you know, the people that it most affects, like the elderly and all that, you know, it's just, uh, it's just really crazy at the moment. Just the, the numbers of people that are that are either affected or have, you know, even passed away from this virus is just uh, it's just insane. And uh, yeah, we've got to get onto it. But it'll be over eventually, and you know, and we'll just all go back to normal life I suppose you know humans are very adaptable and you know we we chug along but I'm just uh, the only concern I've got is what's going to come from this as far as the changes in the world from this you know um, is it just a virus or is there more to it uh, I mean I guess that's probably not the right thing to say because people are uh, dying from it but um i just got a feeling that from all this is going to come um you know it's just going to be a different world i feel like the economy is uh all over the world is obviously not going to be doing very well um, will this be enough to you know affect the economy all over the world the global economy will it change the way we we um, will it change money or the way we use money uh, will we all will, will it finally become a cashless society and um, who knows, you know, are we going to be able to travel um, or are we, are people going to have to um, prove that they've, they've been vaccinated before they um, move around from now on, you know, um, that's a bit of control there. And, uh, you know, imagine that if you had to uh, provide documentation of, you know, wherever you go of your vaccinations and stuff like that and if you have it like they do in some schools if you haven't been vaccinated you can't go to school right so um is that going to be the case oh you can't catch the train because 
you don't have the vaccination that we want you to have um, you know and yeah so I'm not me I'm not big on vaccinations uh, I understand that you know a lot of people have vaccinations and you know and if it saves them from whatever well that's good but um, you know it's also about our, our own immune system and you know I don't know if vaccines are necessarily good for our natural immune system you know sometimes our bodies are just good enough to be able to handle things themselves although you know not necessarily viruses though so Cisco antenna I've got heaps of these so just put this yep just low grade these telephone wires these springy ones I like them because they're heavy they you know there's always good weight and probably because they're curled up and and really if you stretch it out there's a you know it's a lot of wire you know but they certainly add add you know good weight to your pile oh well might uh have a little break and stand up a bit and <laughs> stretch the legs and just uh, break up the, the monotony of this oh, like I said we're getting there we're gonna eventually this whole bin will be uh, empty and I'll be excited and ready to move on to a second bin but uh, yeah so the purpose of this video not really sure <laughs> was just sitting around with you guys processing a bit of cable um passing a bit of time with you some of you might be sitting in your garages or workshops or sheds or wherever um stripping cable or cutting cords yourself or um scrapping out something well you know i can I, i'm I can be your uh, background uh, sound over, you know, a bit of bit of background music <laughs> for you. And uh, staying on the subject of scrapping and keeping you guys motivated to uh, keep scrapping yourselves. And, and don't let the uh, problems of the world get to you. Because... Uh, Life moves on and we'll all survive, or most of us. And, you know, just stay positive. If you've lost your job, you know, maybe go out, look for a bit more scrap. If you can't find it, well, that's okay. We'll all survive. And we'll all hopefully all live, all, all our scrappers will live to see a, a, another day. And another era, another stage of uh, processing e-waste. Um, I don't know. I'm probably going on now. Okay. Remember, so... With the side cutters you can only cut up to about there where the grooves are but uh yeah garden shears the cheaper the ones the better <laughs> for this kind of job anyway
so yeah i'm going to take a little bit of a break now and uh give it about 20 minutes and i'll come back to it but, uh, yeah so as you can see this is going to be me for quite a long time where are we so just so many plugs I mean it's good stuff though I don't mind it I mean even the plugs and this junk you know it's all good weight it's all going to be scrap steel you know the cords well that's good money and um, you know this is the kind of stuff that I rely on to for uh, cash flow and and all that and you know this this is my main drag okay well I used up a whole battery in that last episode <laughs> so I must have spoken for a long time and uh, you know I've continued on processing a little bit so because the the bins are wide at the top and they taper down I, I've probably close to halfway probably maybe not and just got to empty my little tub okay so this is just about full as well just be able to squeeze in a little bit more on the side and uh, this one's going to be ready for the scrapyard nicely packed usually get close to 100 kilos usually about 95 just depending on how packed it is but uh, yeah so before I go to scrapyard I'm probably going to need another bin to keep filling up So even more reason to uh, empty as many of these bins as I can. So I'll just stand up a bit so I can reach into. Uh, yeah, so. I guess I've pretty much uh, covered everything uh, discussion wise already. It's, uh, this is just a one of those jobs where it's between scrapper and product not a whole lot exciting can can be got out of this apart from just the usual processes yeah well some of this should uh, speed up a bit because I have cut quite a few plugs uh, yeah so yeah as I mentioned the street scrapping wasn't that crash hot last time around because of the the storm that came through and all that and uh, So um, hopefully next time round street scrapping turns out a little bit better um, and I'll be uh, a lot more excited to go out there when knowing that I've got a few empty bins to put stuff in. But yeah.
just hoping that the uh, price of scrap copper wire is uh, still holding hopefully it hasn't gone down too much um, but it shouldn't but, you know either way I've still got to take it in and sell it because um, <laughs> once again it's, it's all about the space and I just don't have space to to sit on it but it uh, I haven't heard prices dropping you know drastically so it should be okay sometimes you can hold on to stuff for too long and um, and you know without even realizing prices have dropped and you know you've made a loss other times you can hold on to stuff um, especially if you you know it's pretty low in price and and you can um, you know make a bit more of a profit selling it at the right time it's just all about being able to have room to uh, stockpile it until the right time but uh, lately scrap copper wire has been pretty good price wise so no reason to hold on to it take it in get the cash while we can you know because the the last thing I want is uh, for scrap yards to close down completely during this epidemic and and not having anywhere to uh, to put stuff until they open again that's why today I went and took in uh, two of my barrels of uh, tubs of um, circuit boards because I'm overloaded in circuit boards and I, I didn't want them to turn around and say oh we're closed down for a month or so um, and then I'd be uh, swamped with stuff because uh, there's still people bringing me boards all the time so if, if that happened where my buyer closed down I'd have to uh, stop buying boards until uh, they were back online and you know which wouldn't really be a problem because scrappers would just have to everyone would just have to hold on to their stuff uh, but so far so good I've already booked uh, booked in for tomorrow morning to uh, take the second batch of circuit boards in and get four empty tubs and that should uh, tie me up for uh, for at least a couple of weeks where I'll have be able to still buy boards and stuff okay so these obviously to get data cable got to take off all the plugs but these plugs can be all right especially these ones yeah not bad just throw them in with big pins so in there i just drop the pins in there and later when i actually empty this bin and sort everything out down the bottom of the barrel it'll be just a whole heap of little little pins that I've removed it's nice and clean I like a clean extraction keep the pins in the sockets until that day oh, look at that. half of all the pins came stayed on so but one day all I'll be doing is uh, processing these plugs uh, that's probably still quite a while away but it's got to be done eventually and then after that start dabbling into gold recovery which should be exciting but still as I keep saying it's still a long way off for me because uh, I'm not going to get into gold recovery until I've actually pretty much retired from scrapping when I'm not picking up 
e-waste from uh, businesses anymore at least um, yeah so as I get down I usually just do this and cut cut the plugs off every one that I see it's towards the top yeah. yeah so yeah that's about all I, I've really can think of to talk about <laughs> I've just about talked myself out um, I had my little talk session normally when I'm uh, I'm working out here it's normally not talking to anyone unless the phone rings um, I can go most of the day without actually speaking <laughs> um, and that kind of suits me that's kind of my style I, you know um, it's only, you know, when I'm out the front loading up the van or something and a neighbour walks by and, you know, starts talking, that's probably the only time I talk unless I go out and do a pickup. And even then it's, hi, I'm here to pick up your e-waste. Oh yeah, there it is. Load up. Say bye. And, um, and that's it. so uh, yeah I, I suppose I'm not really sure what the next video will be apart from most likely uh, street scrapping um, I've got a lot of PCs and things to process but you know um, I might just do a, a, a scrap session while I'm processing, scrapping out PCs. I got a, just got an email in between when I had a break now and uh, just a new job. Uh, place has got uh, a bunch, nice big bunch of servers, dull servers. Uh, they're going to, I'm pretty sure they're the real chunky, heavy Dells. So um, there's at least 10. So that's going to be a good pickup. Looking forward to them. So just waiting for them to um, reply to my reply. And I've booked them in for tomorrow. So hopefully they get back to me. And if not, I'll give them a call because uh, once uh, you get a, a sniff of a job, you know, you, you don't want to sort of um, leave it go too long and they might change their mind and find someone else in, in the process, you know, so uh, if they don't, you know, maybe sometimes your email might go into spam, into their spam folder. So uh, just in case, if they don't reply, I've got a, uh, I think I've got a phone number there. I'll, uh, I usually give them a call and just uh, tell them, hey, uh, I'm ready to go. If you're, if you're happy for me to come and do it. Especially when it's, you know, PCs or a whole heap of servers. You can't pass up on that when it comes to e-waste business because they're your main things. And, uh, you know, although the best things to pick up are laptops because if you get pretty good ones, you know, they can be resold. But servers and stuff, well, that gives you all the 
good weight, you know, good boards, just good weight all over. There's a soldering iron or yeah, I might just keep it just in case it works. Normally all the stuff that I put into these bins already been looked at um, whether I want it or not so I'm not just cutting things that I shouldn't be but that soldering iron just slipped through yeah wow it's certainly uh Certainly a lot here. Probably going to take me um, the whole, the rest of today anyway. It's already, you know, getting into the afternoon. So, oh well. I want to at least get this bin out the way. Got those two over there, the red, uh, the orange, and the grey. Um, but I think I might uh, I might even just uh, bring the, em the half empty bin or hopefully it's going to be empty and start stuffing some of this stuff back in there um, because it's probably going to be a bit of rain in the next few days and I, I don't want my the cords to be all wet because it just makes it a little bit harder to process so Even though it's not the priority stuff right now. Yeah, I might not even do it. I've really got to focus on all this stuff that's in bins to uh, get these bins back. Alright. Well, it's, it's slowly getting there. It's, you know, every few minutes, uh, have a little look and say, yeah. We're getting there. These, I just uh, cut the wire off and I'll process these later, just like the plugs. Smash them up, get the brass out. Nice. There's still wire obviously in there. Um, all good stuff. So many things in packets, you know, plugs and cords. This is, uh, I just throw that straight into low grade. Yeah, I'm surprised at how many uh, companies, you know, or their technicians throw out cords and, and you know, things in still in packet. I guess they know what they're doing and if they don't need it they just get rid of it you know I don't mind taking it it just does take more effort and time to process when you've got to take things out of the packets <laughs> but hey when it comes to cords I don't complain really this is Cords are, you know, as they say, this is loosening up. Cords are our bread and butter, you know, for any scrapper, whether, you know, you're scrapping as a business or you're just uh, scrapping as a hobby or, or a bit of both or whatever. You know, insulated copper wire is, is our bread and butter aside from um, your standard scrap steel which uh, if you get enough of it you know on a weekly basis where you can take in a load of scrap steel once a week at least uh, I've lost something here like I think the spring or something I've got a couple of them around but I just can't find them at the moment I think I'm gonna have to go to a hardware store and pick up one of those another cheap one three dollars 
they work really well for this kind of job anyway. So how am I doing so far? All right. <laughs> no doubt half of you are probably already switched off. The other half are probably asleep. Thinking it's almost like watching paint dry. <laughs> this cord cutting caper. Yeah. Well, it kind of is. It feels almost the same doing the job, but uh, with every cut, we're increasing our our profit here. And, uh, you know, at least turning it into half decent money. Yeah, this tub, I was hoping that there would be some kind of e-waste down the bottom of it. That you know, so it wasn't going to take me too long to finish this one, but uh, it looks like it's all plugs, all cords. So, oh well, better for money, not so good for time. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely lost the spring on this. Yeah, I'll get through this as the afternoon moves on. I'll probably just have a cup of coffee and I think I've already got one somewhere. But just, uh, you know, one of the main things is that, you know, this is my full time job and you know, I'm my own boss, and that's kind of how I like it. You know, it just gives me so much flexibility, like, I don't have to sit here and do this right now. If I want to go and sit down, um, go and watch television, or um, whatever. You know, if I want to go out, do some shopping, or whatever I want to do, it's my call. Um, Obviously, if I'm doing something else, I'm not making any money, but, um, you know, I'm calling the shots here, whereas, you know, if you're working, they tell you, you know, what time to start, when you can go on a, on a break, um, when you can go home, uh, all that, you know. Uh, that's just not my scene anymore. Uh, I don't think I could ever go and work for someone else anymore. Uh, full time anyway, because, yeah, I just couldn't handle it, you know. I, I'd prefer uh, to earn less money, but doing exactly what I want to be doing. You know, on my time, um, you know, some days, which is very rarely anyway, but some days the last thing i want to see is scrap you know i just, I just want to totally blank out 
and um, focus on absolutely nothing, you know. And that's not necessarily a, a weekend day, you know. It could be just any random day where, you know, if I was working for someone, I'd have to be there during those days where I, where it's the last thing I want to do is be there. And also, I'm not really a morning person unless I've got a job early in the morning. Most jobs I book for uh, late, well, after 10 o'clock, because I also like to allow myself for traffic and stuff. So yeah, I never do really early pickups unless I have to. And um, uh, just get rid of that. And yeah, and that's what I like, just the flexibility. Um, some days it might take me four hours to get a start to actually go out and start working um, but some days I work until it's, it's dark um, it's just up to me and yeah like I said uh, I'm, I make the call and uh, but I know very well, you know, like, the less I work, the less money I'm going to have. Um, but, you know, once you've done it for a long enough, you know, the idea is not to have to, you know, I don't have to worry about, um, you know, making money every week. I don't have to worry money, you know, I'm, I'm used to it now where, Money doesn't come in every week because you're building up stuff. I'm building up cords, um, and it takes a bit of time until you get enough to take it to the scrapyard. So, so you, I kind of learnt to, uh, yeah, not really even focus a bit on money. Um, it comes in when it comes in, and that's it. I've always got enough to keep me going. So. You know, a little bit in reserve, you know, in case a big bill comes in or car registration, stuff like that. Um, so no dramas at all. Hey, oh, well. Huh. Need a new scene. <laughs> and have a look a bit of greenery sort of settle settle down a little bit you know green always this cat always hangs around um i think it's time to let the chickens out i let them out in the afternoon for a few hours before bedtime and they like to you know just give them a, something different to uh look at rather than but just being stuck in the uh in the chicken run just let them go out with me close up the back door come on yeah these ones they'd normally run straight out but because the cat's around come on come on yeah because the cat's around they're uh, a bit worried so come on No. I just close the back door so it saves me doing it when it gets dark and they can come out whenever they want there hey puss water out huh. yeah. slowly getting out uh, I reckon by the time I'm through oh shush If it lets me talk <laughs> by the time i'm through probably the third bin i'd have had enough of 
cords for a few weeks. I won't want to, you know, I won't want to see them. <laughs> but because I've got a few new sources of cords um, in reasonable bulk. This is going to be a uh, a regular thing for me getting getting so many that I've got to you know pro spend a lot of time processing now. So I've got to you know just uh, stay on top of it from now on. Yeah, the chicken's just going on because of the cats in the area. And it's almost like a warning sign for the other chickens. But the cat has never harmed them. Doesn't really even think of them. <sighs> Alright, well. I'm just going to keep going here, guys. Uh, you're probably over me talking so much you're probably thinking geez <laughs> so I'll um, just keep going here scrapping these plugs away and uh, so not sure what my next video is going to be about but as I said it's most likely going to be a, another street scrapping video and we'll just play it by ear from here see what uh if i get that nice pickup tomorrow might bring in some good stuff to uh to scrap out on video we'll just see what comes of it and uh yeah so uh, i yeah, and as i mentioned before uh, about our friend my friend from uh florida shark scrapper check his channel out there's the uh, channel name. Subscribe to him. Let's let's see if we can get him to 1,000 subscribers and start off his channel with a bit of a bang. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be fun to see uh, if uh, some of my subscribers um, went over and at least subscribed and you know watch a couple of his videos and um, yeah, just keep an eye on what he's up to. And uh, as I said, it's pretty much similar to mine, where uh, he does he does street scrapping, he uh, processes e-waste um, back at home in his workshop. Gold recovery looks at gold recovery stuff, all the usual things that we do as scrappers. And uh, so, yeah, if you're looking for uh, um, a bit more scrap videos shark scrapper and uh you know it's because uh when you're starting out a youtube channel especially in scrapping you know it, it does take time to get um a lot of subscribers or at least enough to uh keep you motivated so i just wanted to see if we could at least get him to a thousand subscribers um That, uh, that would really help him off, probably give him a bit more encouragement to keep going with the channel and to keep scrapping and all that. So, uh, yeah, if you can do that, that'd be great. Shark Scrapper on YouTube. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope I didn't bore you too much. There's no guess as to what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. Uh, in the next video, I might do a little update on how I went. But uh, it'll most likely be when I go to the scrapyard. You'll probably see the update then. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go and get some fresh prices to see if there's any difference in price at the moment. And yeah, should be, uh, should be good. All right, guys. Well, keep scrapping. Keep cutting your cords. Have fun. And I'll catch you... Uh, next time.